Here's how I trained a stable diffusion Laura model to generate the exact same comic book character every single time. So I'm going to teach you two methods whether you're running a monster PC or a potato. In the last video I showed you how to prep the images for your Laura. Remember to create images with different lighting conditions, angles and aspect ratios. This will give your model the ability to generate your character in multiple scenarios with very few limitations. First we're going to need to install Visual Studio. These installations are pretty straightforward and you're going to find the link in the description. To install CoreSS, we're going to need the link from the GitHub repository. Choose a folder to install it in and open up the command prompt. Type in git clone and then paste in the link that we just copied. Once that's downloaded, close the command prompt. Find the setup.bat file. The setup menu will load and click 1 to install CoreSS. Select Torch 2 and press enter. Depending on your internet, this may take a while, so go get a copy. Once that's finished, it's going to ask you where you're going to be running CoreSS. In our case, it'll be this machine. Select no distributed training, no CPU only training, no torch dynamo, and no deep speed. When asked what GPU, type all. If you have a GPU with at least 12 gigabytes of RAM and from the 2, 3, or 4000 series, then select a BF16. If your GPU is older or you have low VRAM, you're going to select FP16. Right click on the GUI.bat and select edit. We'll add dash dash in browser here. Then click save and close the file. This will automatically launch CoreSS into your browser the same way we've been doing with Automatic 11.11. Now when we run GUI.bat, it's going to run a couple more installations and load up in your browser. Head over to Utility so we can caption our training images. I like to use a WD14 captioner, but they all pretty much do the exact same thing. Our captions will be populated with tokens. What are tokens? Tokens are the words that we use in our prompts to describe our image. That way, the AI knows what words to associate with our character, our backgrounds, and everything else. The first prefix we're going to need is our character name. In saying that, I'm not talking about the character name that you're going to give it inside your comic book. I'll explain a little bit about this in a minute. Now at this point, if you've watched any Laura training videos on YouTube, you'll know that it's a circus out there. No one can agree on an appropriate method to training Laura. Make an original name, don't make an original name, describe your character, describe everything except your character. Thanks to AR Overlord, we now know that if we use the name of a celebrity that's already trained into Stable Diffusion, a celebrity that looks similar to our character, it gives Koya a base to start from. If you don't know what celebrity your character looks like, use the Star by Faces app. If you upload an image of your character, the app will show you a number of different celebrities that have similar features to your character. Pick as popular a celebrity as possible. If you pick an obscure actor from the 80s that no one's ever heard of, there is a very good chance that he or she will not be trained into the Stable Diffusion model yet. When in doubt, load up Automatic 11.11, type in that actor's name, and if an image comes up that looks similar to them, then there's a good chance that they're in there. If not, keep looking. In the case of my character, I've selected the actress Mala Nackerman. While she doesn't look completely like my character, it's close enough. Now the second prefix will be dependent on your character's gender and age. In my character's case, it's going to be the word woman, and I'm going to separate these with a comma. You can add undesired tags if you want, but I find this to be a little bit glitchy, and sometimes those tags show up anyways, and I have to delete them manually. The first time you run the WD14 captioner, it'll download the model and it'll take a few minutes, so be patient here. Once that's finished, each image will have a text file next to it using the exact same file name. We can edit them one by one, or we can save a little bit of time. Using the Buru dataset tag manager, we'll be able to edit them all in one hit. I'll be leaving the link to that in the description. Download the latest version, unzip it, and find the Buru dataset tag manager exe, and let's run it. Load the folder where our images and text files are. This app is extremely straightforward. On the left, you'll see all our images. In the middle, the tags that are related to the image selected, and on the right, we're gonna have the tags that are related to all of the images. Now on the right, I will select every single tag that I do not want associated with my character and I'll click the red X to delete them all in one hit. You can also go through each image, adding or subtracting image specific tags that perhaps WD14 didn't pick up. Once you're done, click save and close Buru. Let's head back into CoreSS and click Laura and then dataset preparation. Now add your celebrity name and instance prompt. In class prompt, write what the thing or person is in one word. In my character's case, it's going to be woman. Regularization images are images in the same class that will help Koya know where to insert your dataset. 
you're going to need at least 10 times the images that you have in your data set. Now you can download images off the internet to use as regularization images, but it may take a while because you need quite a few and they've got to be good quality images too. Select the destination where you want your training data to be saved. This will create a series of folders where your models once trained will be saved into. Click prepare training data and copy into folders tab. This is going to save a little bit of time later. I'll be using the checkpoint that I use to create the data set, which is Reality's Edge Anime Edition. In training, go to Source Model, Model Quick Pick, Custom, and then load your source model and click SDXL and head over to parameters. Select the standard LoRa type and batch size to five. Now, if your computer can't handle it, put that down to one, epochs to 10, save every n epochs to one, so it gives you 10 options to choose from later on. This way we'll know when our model is under or over trained. Mix and save precision will depend on your GPU. Depending on whether you went with BF16 or FP16 in the installation, choose the same value now. Stick to two cores, cache latents, and cache latents to disk. Learning rate scheduler to constant, optimizer to ADA factor. Use the optimizer extra arguments you'll find in the description. Your learning rates will be 0.0003, learning rate cycles at one. Now maximum resolution is really gonna depend on whether you're doing a 1.5 model or SDXL model. If you're doing 1.5, it's 512. If you're doing SDXL, it's 1024. We'll need to check buckets because we have images with different sizes and aspect ratios. And set these learning rates to 0.0003, just as we did before with the learning rate. Network ranking can be anything from 32 to 256. This will increase the size of your LoRa, but after a certain size, the difference between the images is very negligible. Network alpha will increase your training time, so you leave this at 1, but if you've got a beefy GPU, bump this up to 32. Everything else is set to 0 and scroll up to advance. Keep end token to 1. If you're doing a comic book character, set the clip skip to 2, select gradient checkpointing, shuffle caption, and make sure that Xformers is selected. And that's it. Now save your settings in case you need to repeat the process. And now we can click start training. Remember earlier I mentioned those of you with a potato PC? In that case, you'll be able to use a service like RunPod. If you sign up for an account, you can use the Stable Diffusion CoreOSS template. We're gonna click on deploy and select the graphics card that we wanna use. You'll need at least 24 gigabytes, so a 3090 or an A5000 should suffice. Customize deployment, increase the container disk to 50 gigabytes, set overrides, continue and deploy again. When you initially run the template, this will download and install everything included. This may take a few minutes depending on the template you've selected. If you click on logs, it'll tell you when the container is ready. Click connect. This window will help you select the applications that you want to run. The three important ones that we need, the first one which will run Automatic 11.11, the second will have Koya SS installed into it, and the very last one is Jupyter. Jupyter is your file manager, and we're going to need that to install our data set. We'll click to open Jupyter, and the first time you run it, it's going to ask you for a password, which will be the exact same password every single time. You'll find that in the description down below. Go into the Stable Diffusion folder. We're going to need to download into the Models folder the SD Excel model that we've been using. We'll go to Civit AI and get a clean link of the Reality's Edge model. Back in Jupyter, click to open the terminal and write wget and paste the link. The download will take a few minutes. Once this finishes, we'll need to rename the numbered file with the file name in the description. So let's go back to our workspace folder and we'll create two new folders. We'll name the first one our celebrity name and the second one woman. We'll upload our training images to each folder respectively. If you have a JSON settings file saved, you can drop that into your workspace as well. Right click and copy path. This is how we copy links from Jupyter to CoreSS. Let's click on LoRa, configuration file. Let's do a forward slash and then paste our link, then load. This will auto populate all the settings that we did earlier. If you didn't create one already, go back and repeat the process. Hang on a second, if you don't wanna go through it all again, you can actually sign up to my newsletter and you'll get a free copy of the JSON file with the settings in it. Go to dataset preparation and copy the paths of the folders that we just created in Jupyter. Remember to do a forward slash before every single path or else we won't be able to find them. Repeats the 20 and let's enter a destination file within the workspace. If you haven't captioned your images yet, you can go through the exact same process we went before using this Koya. Once your lawyers are trained, right click and download into your local computer. Let's test out our LoRa files. Load your prompt, usual settings, click on LoRa's and click on all the LoRa's you created. Highlight and copy all of them and delete everything but the first one. Scroll down to scripts, XYZ plot, change seed to prompt search and replace, and paste in the LoRa's. Make sure to separate them all with a comma. Now we can see them all in the slide and determine which ones are the best. Most times the best ones will be between the third and the seventh version. Anything lower and it's too flexible, anything higher, it's way too rigid to do anything with it when it comes to comic books. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and stick around for the next video. Oh,
Change of scene.